Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today the long weekend is over and a shorter work week begins, but that's not the only good thing going for us as we sit down to watch Mr. Yo playing as the Tatars in red get ready to take on the Viper playing as the Khmer or Kamai in teal. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings with scouts and with llamas it looks like and try to get their butts up to feudal age as fast as possible, let's take a look at the Civ matchup we'll be watching today. The Tatars are a sieve that does whatever it can to push you towards mounted units. Their cav archers come with extra line of sight. They get Parthian tactics and thumb ring for free. Some of their mounted units can be upgraded to get extra armor. And their first unique unit is the Keshik, a medium cavalry unit that actually generates gold every time it pokes and prods at an enemy unit, which can come in very, very useful in the later stages of the game when gold becomes very scarce and raids become pretty damn frequent. Now, once your army is out on the field of battle, it is very important for you to take this. What are you looking at? You are looking at the high ground because Tatars, instead of dealing the extra 25% damage they do on the high ground, deal 50% more damage when they have the elevation advantage over their opponents. Now, this becomes even more important during the later stages of the game when trebs start coming out because the tar trebs can actually be upgraded to have extra range. They cap out, by the way, at 19 range for a trebuchet, which is absolutely bonkers. Now to help feed a big cavalry-based population, the Tatar herdables do contain 50% more food, and starting in Castle Age, every new town center, once it's built, spawns two free sheep, which I'm hoping I'll remember to point out once that happens. Always fun to watch two little adorable sheep with, I guess, red bandanas in this game pop up once a town center is built. Now, due northeast, we've got the Viper playing as the Khmer in Teal, a civilization that focuses on some of the heaviest hitting units in the game. Their scorpions have extra range, can be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Their battle elephants move faster and can be upgraded to hit even harder with a broad plus three attack bonus. And their unique unit is quite possibly one of the hardest units in the game, maybe even the most annoying units in the game to deal with head on. I am, of course, referring to the Ballista Elephant which is basically, as it sounds, is an elephant unit with a giant ballista mounted on its back, which, by the way, like the scorpions, can be upgraded to shoot a second bolt. Now, in order to take advantage of these bonuses and upgrades and amazingly powerful units, the Khmer have to get their butts up to castle and maybe even Imperial as soon as poss possible with a lot of food in the bank. So to help them do this, they do come with a few cool features. To start with, you do not need any structures as the Khmer to go up to the next age, meaning as long as the Viper gathers 500 food, he doesn't need to build anything. No lumber camp, no mill, no mining camp, no barracks, nothing. As long as he's got the resources, there are no prerequisites to going up to the next age. Second, once he hits the next age, the Viper is going to have all of the buildings from that age available to him. Prerequisites be damned. For example, he will not have to build a barracks in order to build an archery range. And lastly, Khmer farmers do not need to bring any food to a mill or a town center. As long as a farmer is actually standing and working on a farm, it will automatically add the food to the coffers or stockpile of the Khmer. So, for example, if the Viper wanted to, he could literally build a farm right here and no mill around. As long as there is a villager working on that farm, it will automatically count towards adding the food count and take a look. The Viper literally just building a mill right now, already clicking up to Feudal Age off the back of 16 villagers, has basically depopulated the entire animal population in the immediate surroundings to do so, but is going up with no two buildings. You'll see once he hits Feudal, I'll point out how the uh, area on Capture Age that usually shows that you need two buildings or two buildings in a castle, for example, to go up. It doesn't exist for the Khmer. Actually, in 18 seconds. Lastly, though, I do want to point out that the Khmer villagers are much harder to raid because they can garrison inside these, inside houses. And once the danger has passed, they can ungarrison and get their butts back to work. So, yeah, take a look at the top right of your screen. You'll notice there's no two uh, houses or boxes that need to light up whenever an opponent, or I guess the Viper's opponent in this case, hits the next age to indicate the requisite structures. Viper has discovered where Mr. Yo's base is. Mr. Yo looks like he's going the complete wrong direction. And so we'll see if he tilts his cavalry unit a little bit to the right. 
and if it runs right into the Viper, who, uh, there you go, has a stable without having to build a barracks. Let's take a look at where the Viper's resources are. Primary gold, a little bit secure behind a forest, but exposed here to the left. Primary stone, nice and secure in the back. And then a few extra gold patches, not too far off campus, not too bad. Secondary stone is a little bit exposed, but that's basically it. And now that Mr. Yo's in feudal, take a look at the top left of your screen. You'll see these two structures. Once he builds, for example, I don't know, a market and a blacksmith, those two boxes will light up. Those don't exist for the Khmer. They do not need anything. Viper is pumping out scout units, and they are heading straight for Mr. Yo's base. Has Mr. Yo discovered his opponent? Not yet. His scout has stopped. I don't know exactly why. Maybe he's busy focusing on this battle back home, this mini battle that threatens to kill some of his villagers. His primary gold, man, oh man, is that exposed. That is a very exposed pile of gold. Stone also in the forward position. And then a few extra gold patches, not too far, just like the Viper has. Secondary stone also in the forward position. So the, Mr. Yo literally has no precious minerals in the rear position. Although I guess stone is not really a precious mineral. It is an Age of Empires. But no stone, no gold in the rear position. What he does have is a nice forest that he can run to if these two ever come under attack although has he has walled himself in which will be fantastic against the viper because the viper is not building any ranged units so these scouts are not getting in into these wood lines and this spearman should be enough to at least make the viper think twice about engaging into here and that precious few those precious few seconds of hesitation might mean that Mr. Yo can save some of these villagers spearman has to go to the other side Ooh, the viper using his numerical superiority superiority to run this spearman ragged he doesn't know where to go does he engage to the south does he engage to the east but the viper's not really pushing his advantage here i mean come on six spearmen uh six scouts against the spearman finally realizes he's got an insane numerical advantage and engages into the spearman but the spearman is smart not his first time at the rodeo he is sticking close to that red line which means if the Viper wants to engage, he will absolutely take town center fire at the same time, though. <laughs> oh, man. Our Tatar has also found a juicy wood line, one that's not walled in at all. I guess this is the original scout, uh, for some reason, hanging out in the middle of the map. The Viper poking in, the Viper poking out. Both players kind of just poking at each other. Mysterio's scout uh, units are already down at half their HP because the Viper's villagers are not going to take this sitting down. They say this is our wood. Oh, and a double whammy there as a villager and a scout die, but Mr. Yo's entire aggression has been cleaned up. It looks like at the same time, though, he did manage to get one of the Viper's scouts. Not with this Spearman. Not with this Spearman. With who? Who got the kill? We will have seen that in picture in picture. I don't know who got that kill. Are there Spearmen I'm not seeing? No, for now, all of uh, Mr. Yo's Spearmen are pretty much virgins at the moment in terms of kill count. Zero as they shoot the Viper's scouts away. The Viper, one of his scouts, very, very weak. And let's take a look now that the players have disengaged. What has Mr. Yo built? We've got a barracks, a stable. And that is basically it. No secondary structure for him just yet as he continues himself to pump out scout cavalry. The Viper going for a blacksmith. We saw the stable. Remember, he doesn't really need the blacksmith to go up to the next age, but to get upgrades, of course he does. And his base? I mean, he did lose one villager, which is never a good thing. But look at the kill count. Six to two. The Viper three times more kills. And a lot of that is in scouts as well, which are very food intensive. Which pretty much explains why Mr. Yo has no food. The Viper also no food. Both of them investing heavily into Feudal Age. With two civilizations that... The, the most fun for us to watch are in Castle and Imperial. Are now very firmly ensconced in some Feudal Age aggression. Although I don't mind it at all. These quick moving scouts, the spearmen, the villagers being pulled off the line. They say, nah, -uh. you didn't get our wood. You're not getting our berries. These belong to us, to the Khmer Collective. And there's nothing Mr. Yo can really do here except uh, get a few lucky shots off with the Spearman. Oh, maybe have more than a few lucky shots off. Oh my god, the Viper loses a lot of light uh, scout cavalry. He's going to lose another one. Oh my goodness. 
kill count not looking too good all of a sudden went from three times ahead to less than two times ahead a lot of vital time for these villagers as well as although i think the viper could pretty much take this now that the scout has been isolated Ooh, he's not paying attention uh, i guess the viper's not paying attention both not paying attention Ooh, we've got the addition of an archer unit here for mr yora tatar now i think this other dot is also an archer yes it is is bringing in ranged units which means trouble for the Khmer who is now plopping down at barracks and another stable now they're playing player banking floating any kind of resources at the moment scouts and a spear get stuck between villagers okay the viper is doing what the viper always does which is a very quick wall off but again now there's archers here and i think this is this open oh my god this is open Oh, they're building a house. He's not trying to wall himself in. He's trying to garrison villagers inside houses. Another one. Oh, no. Two villagers literally die one on top of the other. One thing that is a bit annoying about the Khmer feature. I mean, it's an awesome feature to be able to save your villagers by garrisoning them inside these uh, small structures. They don't regenerate their HP the way they would in the town center. Viper is fighting back. He's now only 50% of the kill count ahead. Although he's starting to starting to grow, Mr. Yo's army is starting to lose HP. And once this scout falls, these archers are now all of a sudden exposed. Ooh, let's follow along the journey of these scout units. Remember that the Tars on the high ground deal 50% more damage. So this five attack becomes seven and a half. So I'm, I'm a little curious as to why the Mr. Yo is abandoning the high ground. You know you're going to lose these units. You know you can't save them. There's no reinforcements coming across the map. Your spearman is still just hanging out here. Why didn't you just stay on the high ground and do as much damage as you could? These are basically full health scouts heading your way with a Spearman reinforce. There is one more scout somewhere. There he is slowly making his way over. But Mr. Yo, Mr. Yo, look at this wall off. This forest doesn't extend to the end of edge of the map. So has he even explored this part? No, he hasn't. So he doesn't know that there's a easier wall off here. Does Mr. Yo because he hasn't explored it. That being said, the Viper is in, doesn't look like he's explored the southern part either, which means he is attacking into a house unnecessarily when this part of the map is completely open, or at least was completely open. Palisade always preferable to a house. And uh-oh, uh-oh, if the Viper is not paying attention, he's going to get sandwiched here. He is paying attention. We'll take a bit of arrow fire if it even lands. I don't think it even landed. He's still just 26 HP down. And let's see what's going on now that the players are kind of somewhat disengaging. Although, of course, I say that Spearman show up. Mr. Yo with the emergency wall off. Man, oh man, is it always fun to watch pro players play Tetris with the map. Mr. Yo, 30 seconds ahead of his opponent or maybe 25 or 25 to 30 seconds. Specificity, obviously, you guys know, is not my strong suit. Ahead of his opponent heading up to Castle Age. Both players basically the same economies. 42 villagers for one, 41 for the other. Both still have their stone, although never mind. The Viper has spent 60 of his stone, although does have four villagers gathering more. And let's see what these players decide to do once they actually hit Castle Age for now. Our Tatar, again, it looks like this is this is high ground, right? This looks like an elevation. 50% more damage is not something to scoff at. Especially not when there's spearmen added into the mix and you're attacking in with cavalry. Especially light cavalry units like scouts. So Mr. Yo hits Castle Age first. What does he do? He immediately gets Bodkin for his archers, crossbows, and one camel. Just, you know, why the hell not to help against these scout units who are doing their best, I guess to bust into this house but one villager repairing should do enough let's see the camel take these four on let's see if the viper engages into this or if he runs away that camel should absolutely be able to shred these scouts to pieces 1.45 movement speed 1.55 movement speed Ooh, our tatar is going cav archers why the hell not he's already invested in into attack upgrades but he's taking fights from the low ground uh, here and there, which I don't really, I don't really like seeing Tatars take fights from the low ground. I don't know why. You've got such a powerful feature, and by the way, there the, <laughs> he builds it down center, center, and Baba go the two red sheep. 
Not so far, Khmer, who builds a eye like this town center right next to the primary gold. I don't mind this town center at all either. I mean, you, you could have built it on this side of the map, but then that would limit the number of farms you could build once the stone gets mined or mined out. Individual units streaming across the map. The Viper very much in control of this game militarily. 12 army count to 5, but he's starting to fall behind on villager count. Not too sure where he's going with these light cavalry units. Uh, based on this posturing, I'm assuming relic duty, relic patrols. The hell killed that knight? <laughs> Sometimes the action happens so fast. What the hell killed that knight? It looked like the red units were looking the other way. Maybe the uh, cav archer fired an arrow, and then while it turned away, the knight bit the dust. I love this location as well. As long as he controls this high ground, and there are the two sheep that pop up with their adorable, adorable red bandanas. Mr. Yo, still down army count, still up villager count. Let's see if we can uh, figure out which way he's... I mean, obviously, with a third archery range, we know which direction our Tatar is going. Cav archers for the Tatars are man-oh-man -oh -man with their extra armor. Can take an absolute beating. For now, six of them are here together with a camel. <laughs> the Viper is... He is making knights, which means these camels are a pretty good move out of Mr. Yo. But the question is, oh, it's not a good move. He's getting absolutely wedged in here. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The Viper just so freaking fast. Mr. Yo loses two of his scouts while at the same time, or his uh, Cav Archers, while at the same time doing literally no damage on this part of the map. Knights are here, but good luck chasing down a camel. Might want to turn around and try to get at least maybe one or two swipes off at this Cav Archer. No, he decides to actually go for the camel. Yikes. Are they going to get any kills? No, man. Oh, man. One kill for eight Cav Archers. Not exactly the greatest use. And now they are also being shooed away. It looks like they got one kill. Was it a villager? Yeah, it was a villager. But now the light cav, which should be faster. 1.65 to what? 1.5? 1 1.54. 1 should be able to shoo those away. You're on the high ground. You're on the high ground. Your 8 attack becomes 12. 12 pierce attack against a unit that has 3 Melee or Pierce armor is not bad at all. Nine damage per volley of an arrow. Remember, Parthian tactics, thumb ring, all for free. Extra armor available. So Mr. Yo is going to start flooding the map. 20 Cav Archers in production. Let's see this go into the later stage of the game. Let's see them fully upgraded. And let's see how the Khmer decides to respond. I mean, their Hussar spam at the end of the game is absolutely epic because villagers don't need to drop off food. Take a look at the top right of your screen. Look at the food count. Look at it just going up, 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 up a unit, up a unit, up a unit. Every single millisecond. It's just absolutely awesome if your plan is to spam Hussars. It's funny that the, <laughs> the Viper, I guess, uh, muscle memory is placing a farm right next to this mill. Very exposed when you can literally just place a farm right here. Anywhere here. And it would be much, much more protected or even around the castle. Which we're uh, getting to see. Oh my god, let's see Ballista Elephants every time we watch the Khmer. I mean, you know Hussars are probably going to come out, but Ballista Elephants are always the big question mark. Mr. Yo, continuing to circle, has gotten wind of this castle, manages to push away the villagers, scare them away. Viper's army nowhere here. Nowhere close. Somehow the Viper has managed to accumulate three relics. Has he seen the last ones on the map? Yes, he has. He's seen this one. Uh, I guess that is the last one on the map. Looks like uh, Mr. Yo may have taken the fourth or maybe the Viper. We'll see what the numbers say in a minute. And now these Scorpions with the extra range. Eight range. Roman Scorpions be damned, says the Viper. I'm going to pump out four Scorpions because why not? You are going Cav Archer. Even the Jaguars are on my side. 
Not too sure this is a battle that the Viper wants to take, although... Although, I was going to say, for a lot of this, Mr. Yo looks like he's on the low ground. Ouch. Ouch. That was an unnecessary throw of a whole bunch of Cav Archers. And it looks like something similar happened here. The Viper managing to push away these numbers by just having these tanky Knight units. Still, no armor upgrades on them. Just a plus one. Where's your plus two? Oh, he doesn't have the food for it. He is busy pumping out as many units as possible. Castle does go up, a second castle going up as well. But Mr. Yo's up to Imperial in two minutes, 50 seconds. We are going to have a Tatar in Imperial, but man, oh man, Mr. Yo has angered Mother Nature and the Jaguars. Oh, look at how amazing. Number one, the Viper's reaction time. Always incredible to see these pro players. Man, it's so impressive. And number two, <laughs> they're hiding in the house. How cool is that? The other day when I cast the Teuton game, I talked about how the Teutons have some features that fundamentally no other civilizations have. You know, some civs have extra armor. Some civs have extra attack. Some civs have extra speed uh, or quicker produ producing times or training times. But things like the uh, extra melee armor on siege units or castles that fire extra arrows when infantry is garrisoned inside, that's something very unique, as is being able to garrison your units or villagers, I guess, inside your houses. Similar to how the Mongols have with Nomad, their houses don't lose the population space once they're destroyed. Seven ballista elephants while I've been blabbing on. Oh my god, does he love the sound of his own voice as ballista elephants are coming out? We're finally going to get to see a Khmer game with Ballista Elephants. Okay, Camel's kind of just shadowing that villager. It's a take your camels to work day. Apparently, they weren't attacking him at all. Oh, but the Ballista Elephants, you're a little outnumbered here. Your uh, stats are pretty damn impressive with 270 HP. But the Camels still do come with a nice attack. As do the Cav Archers if they get on the high ground. But, you know what they don't come with? Protection against getting converted by, I guess, two monks at the moment. One Ballista Elephant says, I'm just gonna park my big wrinkly gray butt here, and if you even try to move out, I'm just gonna attack everything you have, Mr. Yo. I don't think he's seen this Ballista Elephant. This is a deterrent elephant. A deterrent elephant to stop Mr. Yo from thinking about going out onto the map. You know, it, actually, with the it, hill advantage attacking on a 12, no, five Pierce Armors. Wait, I was going to say, maybe the Cavar just can take these fights. I mean, it, obviously, they, it looks like they absolutely can't. These ones should be doing a good amount of damage to these elephants. So, I mean, yeah, they're doing a really good amount of damage to the elephants. But this elephant's are really annoying to deal with. And so being able to absolutely wreck them with Cav Archers, their firing speed isn't great. 2.5, the Cav Archers mu are much faster at 1.8. Literally twice as fast. Or actually, no, not twice as fast. Uh, what, 30, 40% faster firing rate? And now they're on the high ground as well, and they outnumber. Look how quickly these Ballista Elephants are dying. Oh, damn. Oh, my goodness. This is not something we're used to seeing Ballista Elephants getting taken out so quickly, doing so little damage. They are just incredibly annoying to deal with. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I don't know where Red even has a monk. He must have died. We'll have seen that in picture in picture. Oh, you might want to get up on the high ground one tile to the right. Not that it matters, but okay. It looks like our Tatar has the first Tatar Ballista Elephant. Ooh, this is problematic. Mr. Yo just everywhere. Viper finally heading up to Imperial one minute away as heavy Cav Archers are going to pop out. And now they are heavy. Now they are to the south. Now they are to the north, including this one Ballista Elephant. And in the center, we saw the one castle going up. Mr. Yo not happy with one castle, plopping down a second look at that crazy Pierce Armor of the heavy Cav Archer. And now the castle is under siege from the high ground. No Timurid siege craft, only 16 range, no siege engineers either. And the Viper, he's got the more powerful unit, but man, oh man, is it slow. Oh God. 
Look at the mini map. Look at the squeeze that Mr. Yo. Oh my god, what a massacre. Look at the squeeze that Mr. Yo is putting on the Viper. I mean, even using this converted ballista elephants. He's to the north. He's to the northwest. He's to the south. He's to the southeast. The only place he isn't is here in the east. But everywhere else, you've got red poking and prodding, trying to find a weak spot, trying to distract these ballista elephants. You do not want them. Oh my god, they're going to be a lead in a second. That's amazing. You do not want these incredibly powerful units clumped up in a death ball and taking them on one on one. Oh no, the villagers yet again get caught out here. But I'm starting to get a little bit scared for the Viper. His army count is half of his opponent. And even though these are now elite, so 40 more HP, seven Pierce armor. These are heavy cav archers now. They deal in 11, so with the high ground, add another five and a half to that. Which means these Ballista Elephants are going to take a, an absolute punishment. But the Viper doing a good job luring Mr. Yo into the castle firing range. Uh-oh, Mr. Yo doesn't notice. Loses a little more than he probably should have. Viper castle under attack. Second one falls. And now he clears this part up, though, so this gold is secure, at least for now. I don't know that the Viper necessarily has the villagers needed. He is housed at 140. He is getting double crossbow, so a second Ballista Bolt will be fired by his Ballista Elephants. Where is Red's Ballista Elephant? It has died. Mr. Yo needs to get some critical damage done right now. I love that he's pulling the Viper's army left, right, up, down. Again, you do not want to engage in Ballista Elephants. Oh, and especially now Hussars are going to come out. Timurid Siegecraft. Look at the range. Excuse me. <clears throat> Pardon me. Look at the range of the Trebuchet in 5, 4, 3, 2. 18 range. Just needs Siege Engineer, and it will be 19 range. But as I was saying, I absolutely love what Mr. Yo is doing. Unfortunately... I don't think he's, uh, something I rarely say about Mr. Yo. I don't know if he's, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I got absolutely distracted by the flaming camel. The flaming camel. Careful. They come with a massive attack bonus against elephants. Look at that. 130. Timurid Siegecraft, once you research it, does unlock the ability to start producing these flaming camels. Oh my god, you love to see it. As I was saying, I don't... Uh, something I rarely say about Mr. Yo, I don't think he's active enough on the map. He's letting the Viper clump his Ballista Elephants, but now that there's Flaming Camels in the mix, he's going up to 11 Flaming Camels. Got Ballista Elephants here. Looks like they got... I don't know what that is. Maybe a Villager? Hussars for the Khmer clean up the force to the north, and now it's Mr. Yo who's in a Death Ball. But a death ball of cav archers. And these ballista elephants have to be so careful. Man, do we rarely get to see. Oh, 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 oh my god. How many ballista bolts are we seeing here? This is just absolutely insane. It looks like the Viper is raiding Mr. Yo's base at the same time. But who can peel their eyes away from the insanity that's unfolding right beneath our very eyes? Flaming Camels trying to close in on the elephants. Oh my god, that's all they need to do is just close on a few of them. And the Viper has been pushed back. The contain continues. Hussars, though, from him are raiding. Looks like the party to the north of Hussars and Ballista Elephants have died. But upgrades on these guys? Oh my god, I'm trying to click one. Uh, not yet fully upgraded. It's still a minute and a half away. And look at Mr. Yo. He says, I know you're going to come back for this gold at some point. When you come back, there's going to be a castle absolutely firing arrows onto your head. Z himself brings how many? Eight villagers. Okay, not a bad amount of villagers to get the gold, but the Viper's raiding to the south. The Viper's raiding in the center of the base. He is continuing to send his Hussars. Are they chasing here or are they just pathing this way? I think they're just pathing this way. I don't know that he necessarily saw these Hussars from Mr. Yo. And man, oh man, if we're going to see... A Hussar versus Hussar raiding game between the Viper and Mr. Yo. My head just might explode. I don't know that I can cast all the million of di different directions that they go in. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ballista elephants get into the castle. 
get into the castle and get out the other side. Oh man, this one ballista elephant has a, whoa, my God, 10 HP. Get in the castle and hope you heal while this treb bombards you from the high ground. And here come the Hussars. It looks like they've absolutely slaughtered Mr. Yo's construction crew. Oh my God, all those eight villagers dead. Yikes. But Mr. Yo, he is replying. He wants to take this area. He is not giving up on it. Flaming camels being spent on Hussars, not exactly the best use for them. But there's enough Tatar firepower here. I mean, look at the army count, 51 to 17. So many ballista bolts. Mr. Yo did manage to clean up the Hussars here with his body of Hussars. And now even more villagers are streaming, 13 villagers. This castle, 80% finished, should be finished very, very quickly. Viper's banking a good amount of gold. What he doesn't have is everything else. Holy moly, no food, no wood. He's losing his infrastructure. He has expanded nicely to the north, which is amazing, but it looks like they're... <coughs> Excuse me, I don't know why my throat is so dry all of a sudden. Actually, I do know it got really cold all of a sudden in Toronto. And so we've had our heaters on all day, which dries out the air. I got to get my uh, humidifier up and running. <laughs> A glimpse into the life that nobody cares about. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, they stopped for a second. Oh, they did a good amount of damage. It kind of looks like the fire spread to the farm, but we know that's not the case. As I was about to say, Mr. Yo is just raiding everywhere at the moment. I, I say everywhere in one extra location. When I wanted to say it, he was raiding everywhere. I think he was raiding three different locations. Cab Archer's not really engaging into this. 65 villagers on food versus 40 villagers on food. Villager count is identical, 125 to 123. Somehow the Viper has managed to get his food, his, uh, food count, his army count back up. But not for long if these camels have anything to say about it. Boom, they go boom. Perfect targeting of the one in the center knocks those elephants down onto their backs. Only four ballista elephants left, and that's all she wrote for our Khmer that just cannot compete with the explosive firepower of this camel. Holy moly, this is not a Persian war elephant. This is not a Vietnamese battle elephant that can take a 20 plus 130 attack bonus. This is just a 310 HP unit that man, oh man, could not withstand the brutality of the Tatars. What an absolute epic game. I mean, again, the Viper. Oh, look at that. At the end of the day, actually, he did end up with wood and gold. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell wood and gold is going to get him with his infrastructure. Let me see. Does he have a single archery range? No, he's gone full on stables. Not a single archery range. Ballista elephants cannot be bought for wood and gold. I guess what he could do is try to use maybe his market. Maybe? To buy some food, sell the, the wood, buy the food. In any event, though, doesn't really matter. Hypotheticals aside, Mr. Yo just pummeling right through the center, taking out the heavy hitter. I mean, the Viper, awesome, awesome move. Kudos to the Viper for showing us the Ballista Elephant and the insane amount of damage and fun that you can have with this unit, especially with the uh, double crossbow upgrade. Let's take a look. Oh, 90 ca It seems like there were a lot more than this. Although maybe that's just because he was uh, just so active with them towards the end of the game. Hussars 155. The Viper. Hera level APM towards the beginning of the game. Mr. Yo. <laughs> Speaking of the beginning of the game, 11 seconds into the game. Peaks in APM. I don't know why I click technology. Relics playing a decent role. 2,000 extra gold for the Viper who, okay, at the end of the day, did get the four relics to the one of his opponent. And the Viper leading in food, but everything else he's down. Gold is identical. Stone, he's ahead about three castles worth. And wood, about 10,000 extra wood. But what the hell are you going to do with all that wood? You're going Hussars and Ballista Elephant. Not exactly a lot of necessary wood expenditure, unless you count the farms, of which he's got, let's see, right before the game ended, 47 villagers on food, 56 farms, plus a bunch of these uh, expired unseated farms here as well and mr yo just did such an amazing job i mean look at this row of castles that he's building 
as much as the Ballista Elephant can take an amazing fight, and as much as it's one of the most annoying units in the game to deal with, it can't really move very fast, which exposes it very much to castles. And by the way, castles building flaming camels, not this one all the way to the, to the right of the map, but they he is basically cordoning off the Viper so that the Viper's only ability to attack Mr. Yo is with Hussars, which, don't get me wrong, is still an amazing thing to attack in with, but once you remove the threat of the Ballista Elephant, at least Mr. Yo knows the worst that can happen to him, the absolute worst, is losing a few villagers before he garrisons them inside the town center. There's town centers everywhere here. And he's got his own hussars, by the way. The stables, where are his stables? Kind of middle of the map, so equidistant from the base and the offensive side of the map. So brilliantly placed stables here for Mr. Yo. Let me fast forward right until the end of the game, actually. I don't think that's going to change the uh, the villager or the, the resources gathered that much. Let's take a look at the kill count. Ooh, Mr. Yo with the ranged units. 90 villager kills to 21. Th over 300 to just under 200. So uh, 120, I want to say, or so more kills than his opponent, which is not surprising with the cav archers that can just hit and run, run away. 78 kills for 29 cav archers is, I would say, medium. Medium decency. What is that? Less than... Uh, just about three kills, yeah. Just about three kills, or maybe I'm wrong. No, 60 plus 27 is 87, just under three kills per Cav Archer. So he's been babysitting them quite well, but ultimately these Cav Archers just prove way too powerful for the Ballista Elephant, especially for the few engages we saw where he took the high ground and added the 50% extra attack. And man, oh man, you best believe the thumbnail for this video is going to have a flaming camel, which if you've already clicked this video, you absolutely know. But at the time of recording this, I am telling you uh, across space and time that this thumbnail is definitely going to have some kind of flaming camel on it because that is not a unit that we get to see very often. And neither is the Ballista Elephant. So what a super fun game between these two players showing us units we generally don't see. In addition to units we always see, like Cav Archers and Hussars, which are just absolutely awesome. The maneuverability, the speed is just fun to watch, especially with two sieves like this that are just super fun. And yeah, at the end of the day, there must be a winner. There must be a loser. In this case, Mr. Yo manages to quarantine. Uh, I was going to say quarantine. I meant uh, constrain. I don't know why my mind said quarantine. <laughs> manages to constrain the Viper into the north, northeast portion of the map. And look at the mini map. The Viper has literally zero presence anywhere aside from his one little thin, thin piece of land here. And the majority of it's about to get cracked open. I mean, Mr. Yo, if he wants to, can just send Hussars into here. And there's nothing the villagers can do aside from run into the houses. In which case, he's not gathering food. In which case, he's got... Not that he's got a lot of food to begin with. In which case, he can't build Hussars. In which case, the game is over just as it is. And Mr. Yo, with the flaming camels, the 18 range trebuchets, and the awesome use of Cav Archers, takes the W. But what a super fun game. GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.